Hello everyone and welcome to Friday Football Fever, our final show of the year. It's week two of the playoffs and we've got five Suncoast area teams still alive. A big night with some big matchups. We start as always with our USF Sarasota Manatee Game of the Week. State ranked Armwood at Venice. Not a good start for the Indians in this one. This is a turnover. Jeremy Ware recovers somehow, just kind of stripped the ball out of there. He's brought down near the 30-yard line. Armwood gets a touchdown out of it almost right away. Noah Johnson to Dennis Harris. Yes, I promise it was a touchdown in the back of the end zone there. 7.27 to go in the first 7-0 at that point. Venice would move the ball a little bit, though. Bryce Carpenter, the freshman, passes to Langston Provit. Armwood ball here though. Venice D all over the quarterback here. Look at him, five green shirts. That's a sack with a loss of six yards. More trouble for Armwood here. That's a fumble, ball is on the floor. And uh, losing several yards there. And then after a holding call, Armwood here. Venice gets the ball back. Provit up the sidelines, a huge gain. Look at Provit. A little move there. He's got eyes on the end zone, but he would be taken down here. Uh, he would not be denied, though. Provit takes the snap, and look at him complete the pass to Aaron Hackett for a touchdown. He's super versatile. We haven't seen him throw a touchdown. How about that? We're tied at seven. Armwood QB here scrambles. Scrambles and scrambles, but look at all the green shirts in the frame there. They bring him down there. Next play. For the Hawks, Venice D, another sack. The Venice D was really good tonight, almost equaling how good Armwood's phenomenal defense is. So Venice gets the ball back, and the ball comes loose. It's a turnover. Jordan Griffin scoops it up, and he's going the other way for six. 14 to seven Hawks at that point. More from the Indians' offense. Carpenter trying to get something going. Picked off by Aaron Covington there, and he's dropped before he gets into the end zone. A couple plays later though, Aaron Collins is gonna get in for the score. 21 to seven, Armwood at this point. And the Hawks go on to win it 42 to 14. Got a little out of hand late in this one. And that's the end of Venice's season. Still a terrific year. SNN's Amber Stidham saw this one in person, joins us now live on a windy evening. Uh, Amber, um, you know, Venice scored early in this game, an offensive touchdown, which doesn't happen to Armwood a lot, but and then it just kind of got out of, out of control at the end there. Yeah, it really did. It was a lopsided game and it was tough for Venice. You saw throughout that first half, they really looked like they had all the momentum in the world. Armwood had missed a field goal. Venice got that touchdown. Their defense looked absolutely amazing. But Armwood got back to doing their kind of football, which again, heavy defense interceptions ended up taking that one 42 14, a very lopsided score. I did talk to John Peacock after the game. He told me obviously he was upset with this one, disappointed in the outcome, but uh, it just came down to not executing. You know, hats off to them. They could, those kids worked hard all year long, worked, worked a lot hard in the offseason. They had a great year. Uh, we just came up a little bit short to a good football team and made some mistakes. And, you know, obviously the score looks a little lopsided, but, uh, you know, I thought, I thought it did a good job, you know, tonight. You know, both sides, uh, um, arm was going to go a long way, and uh, I'm proud of my kids. Yeah, and you can certainly say Venice had a very successful season this year, so it's very tough to see them end it in this way. He did say he's very proud of his seniors and is really looking forward to rebuilding this for next year. Adam? Yeah, definitely a good season, and I do agree with Coach Peacock there. I, I do see Armwood going a really long way, possibly yeah. a state championship run. Certainly. All right, thank you, Amber. Mm -hmm. How about undefeated Vero Beach making the trip to Manatee tonight? Vero Beach undefeated but I don't think they are on the level of an Armwood or even a Manatee. This one was a wild one. First quarter, no score. Stanley Carrier passes to Chris Larson. What an over-the-shoulder catch there for the touchdown. 7-0 Indians. This is Justin Mosley's home team, the Indians, by the way. Next Vero possession, Aaron Koo. The punt is blocked. Jamar Gaskin, that's a safety 7-2. Manatee next possession, direct snap to Johnny Lane. A little shake and bake. Johnny Lang had a huge night. This is just the start of it. Touchdown, 9-7 to seven Manatee. Still in, the, <clears throat> still in the first. Carter floats one. Picked off by Joe Robinson here. And Joe Robinson thinks he's got a pick six. Look at a little stop and go. Another little stop and go. Finds the seam, but he's brought down by behind. Still a great play. Second quarter now. Carter 
with the pass complete to MJ McGriff for the touchdown, 14 to nine. Vero retakes the lead. Justin Mosley's happy, but Manatee answered every time. Lang again on a direct snap, that's Paydirt. Lang had five touchdowns on the night. And Manatee cruises 47 to 28. The Canes will play at Dr. Phillips in the regional final. All right, we will hit the locker room for a break, but still to come, Charlotte hit the road in a wild one, plus Mooney at home, and could Braden River stay undefeated and advance? Those highlights and more coming up. You're watching Friday Football Fever. All right, welcome back. Let's just jump right back into the action. Clearwater Central Catholic visited Mooney. This is the regional final round, remember. We start in the first quarter after some push-ups. Reese Vita drops back, fires over the middle. Sean Morris Jr., the catch and the first down. He is brought down, and two plays later, Vita gets the Cougars into the end zone, floats this pass to the corner. I promise Blair Perry caught the ball because I step out there and you can see it's in his hand. Touchdown Cougars, seven to zero at that point. Next Marauder drive, Jeff Smith, little screen pass here to Cameron Cotman. And Cotman, he's coming right towards me behind the camera and right into your living room. That's a touchdown, but it would be brought back by a holding penalty. There's the flag on the field. Two drives later though, CCC scores. Smith on the keeper up the middle, he is gone. Not only does he throw, he can run, and he also punted for the Marauders. That ties it up at seven. Second quarter now, Marauder ball. Chad Wilkins is in the backfield, and he sacks Smith there. The Cougars had a drive in the red zone with under a minute to play. Stall on fourth down. Marauders won it 14 to 10. Mooney's great season is now over. Charlotte at Fort Myers. Boy, the Tarpons on a roll. Could they win their second straight road playoff game? First drive, bad snap on the punt. Fort Myers can't pick it up. Charlotte recovers on the Fort Myers 27. Might have something to do with the Green Wave's terrible uniforms. That led to Nathan O'Donnell's 41-yard field goal. Good and then some, 3-0 Charlotte. 10-3 game in the second. Fort Myers' James Brunson running towards the end zone. It's a fumble. Charlotte recovers in the end zone. 10-3 Tarpons led it at the half. Third quarter. Fourth and four, Fort Myers' Dylan DeGroote finds James Brunson, the first of his four touchdowns. We got a ball game, 10 to nine at this point. And after two offsides penalties by Charlotte, Fort Myers goes for two. DeGroote punches his way in, 11 to 10. Green Wave take the lead. Elijah Mack, though, didn't want to have any part of that. Up the middle, breaking three, finding a hole. 59-yard touchdown, 17-11 Charlotte at that point. This one was a wild back and forth fourth quarter, and it meant a 33-26 win for Fort Myers. Charlotte's season is over. Brain River hosting a very strong state-ranked East Lake squad. Second straight home playoff game for the Pirates. Under three to go in the first quarter. Jake Hudson hands to Dylan Renneker for a touchdown. 10-0 East Lake. Second quarter now, same strategy. Hudson, Renneker, touchdown, 17-0. Eagles are cruising. Later in the second, Pirates get the ball. They try to move it a little bit. Jacob Huseman floats a great pass to Justin Ross. Nice catch, huge game, yeah. Pumped up are the Pirates, and they would cap the drive with a handoff to Raymond Thomas, plow through the middle, and he hits Paydirt for the touchdown, 17 to seven at that point. Under a minute to play in the half, Jake Hudson throws to Bryce Miller into the end zone. Look at this catch, leaping, 24 to seven Eastlake. Eastlake wins it 37 to 21. Great season for Braden River. All right, we will huddle up, but still to come, we will chat with Doug Miles and break down next week's game. Singular, you're watching Friday Football Fever. All right, we welcome in Doug Miles from Southwest Florida High School Game of the Week. He calls the Game of the Week on, you can find it on an internet stream, ustream.com or dougmilesmedia.com. Doug, we got to start with the one and only team still alive in the playoffs, Manatee. Yeah, five coming in, one coming out, and a great performance again by the Hurricanes. Really have a good chance now to uh, have another run of the state title, and uh, congratulations to John Booth uh, in his first year. Yeah, he gets uh, two home games and two wins so far in his first year as the Manatee head coach. Five touchdowns on the night for Johnny Lang. They will play at Dr. Phillips 
yeah. uh, next week. Great uh, job again by Johnny Lang, and uh, congratulations to the Canes putting up 47 points against a team that uh, had outscored their opponents 466 to 169. That's so, unbelievable, uh, yes. Yeah, great so accomplishment tonight by Manatee. Offensively, Manatee strong. How about Braden River? Their season ends tonight, but not for a lack of a great year against a really good East Lake team. 37 21 Braden River yeah, had a great year, though. East Lake had not lost since uh, last year's state semifinal game, and uh, a great season again by Kurt Bradley, the head coach, who uh, really turned that program around. Complete turnaround. I mean, they hosted two playoff games this year. Pretty awesome for them. Uh, Venice loses tonight, but um, not without putting some points against an Armwood team that really doesn't give up any touchdowns at all. No, 218 to nothing uh, the last five games for Armwood coming into tonight. So putting up two scores uh, by Venice, uh, that's an accomplishment in itself. It wasn't the way that uh, Venice wanted to end its season and there's no moral victories when you lose in the playoffs, but to score twice on an Armwood team that doesn't let anybody score, not, not bad. And, uh, John Peacock, another great job by him, and uh, our favorite player, Langston Provent, threw a touchdown pass tonight. Threw a touchdown pass, <laughs> interesting, and Bryce Carpenter comes back. He will be a very seasoned sophomore next year. Yeah, look will be good again. Look out for him for sure. Also, Cardinal Mooney's season ends. Uh, apparently, they had a drive in the fourth quarter in the last seconds of the game from very close range, but... Uh, their season ends in a, in a 14 to 10 loss to a good Clearwater Central Catholic team. Yeah, Josh Smithers got the program back on track after a couple of down years, so good job by him. Hosted a couple of playoff games, and they lose in the uh, regional final here tonight, so a great season for them. Uh, I want to thank Doug for joining us all this year. Uh, it's been a pleasure having thank you, Adam. Doug. A lot Appreciate of fun. That. Appreciate it. That's going to be it for our last Friday football fever of the season. It's been a great year. We've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, everyone.